Elevate TV, Advancing Kingdom Lifestyle. Good evening. Praise the name of the Lord. We are really apologetic because of the delay. We just got into some technicalities and uh, so we were not able to come uh, at the top of the hour, but we are here finally. And uh, so good evening from Tracing the Mantles. We are so glad that you could join us. We've been waiting to come to you. And we also believe that you also are waiting for us to come. Tonight we have a program, a live program. And so you can join us. You can be able to interact with us in the matters Tracing the Mantles. Tracing the Mantles is a program that comes to you every Sunday evening uh, from 8.30 our desire, our longing, is to interrogate the issues that have got to do with the divine ordination of God for this nation. And so for you and for me, and we've been doing it now for several months, and we, we just want to keep going until the Lord finally tells us that he has accomplished what he wants to accomplish. Our greatest desire is to see the Lord fulfill his will for this nation. And I believe that is also your desire. It is not only us who have that desire. Many people all over the place have that desire. And so we are part of that fellowship. And we give God the glory for giving us that chance. We want to ask you to invite your friends. Write to them and tell them tracing the mantles is on. And let them become a part of this huge fellowship. Blessed is the name of the Lord. We want you to sit and enjoy. Amen. Tonight, I have a few guests with me on this program. And I just want to introduce them to us and ask them to greet us. On my immediate uh, right is my good friend, Apostle Charles Ndonga. I usually call him my apostle. Yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. I remember one time you preached a sermon mm. a long time ago, mm. and I was so impacted. Wow. We believe God is going to use you to impact people Amen. tonight in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Look at that camera yes. and invite the people. Mm. Tell them something little about yourself. Thank you, Pastor Sunta, for mm -hmm. having me in this show. We thank God for this one of time. My name is Apostle Charles Donga. She has introduced me from Oasis of Urban and Grace Church. I thank God for this Elevate uh, program. We are looking forward to have a great time to be blessed together. God bless you, my viewers. Mm. Mm. Amen. Karibu sana. Thank you. To the program. We are very, very happy to have you. Thank you. I want to introduce the next guest to us on my father's uh, right. Yes, the man himself, uh, the only Apostle David Juma. Would you Thank you so look much. Look at that <laughs> camera and uh, greet the people yeah. and invite them to the program. Thank you. I'm so glad. Thank you, our viewers. It's a joy to come here today and be able to participate in raising mantles. We're looking forward for interaction. Get just ready for the blessing. I believe the Holy Spirit will guide us. Wow, it's a very great responsibility, Pastor Sunta. What you're doing is a great honor and blessing to raise the mantles, talk to the fathers. And we are here as a younger generation to be able to uh, find what they have said and the impact it's bringing on us. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I believe that this program has been very impactful. Absolutely. I think we keep hearing all kinds of things everywhere we go. This last week we were in Eldoret. Mm -hmm. And you remember that what we were hearing there? We are watching, actually, <laughs> and it's amazing mm -hmm. what's happening across the nation. Yes, yeah. even those people that are not able to are not able to get the TV signal, mm -hmm. they are on on social media, wow. and they are really watching this. Mm -hmm. And our greatest desire is that it will not end at watching; mm -hmm. that something will be birthed yeah. in the hearts of people, mm -hmm. and something will cause 
uh, human beings in this nation to connect with God yes. concerning his will desire mm. for our land because we believe he has that. Mm. What has the tracing the mantles meant for you in the time? I believe you have watched. Yes. yes. Tell us, talk yes. to us. Well, uh, tracing the mantle program is not just a TV program. I think to me it's a ministry that is touching the men and the women of our time. Number one, uh, uh, tracing the mantle is also going back to the roots and trying to find where all began. And um, when I have been following this program, and especially the kind of the guests and the fathers of the gospel that they have been interviewing uh, uh, all the time, the kind of the things that they are speaking to us and they trying to, it's like, you no, know, just waking us up, just like uh, telling us, hey, you generation, Things were not like, like this those days. It never started like this. We are doing well, you are doing well, but you need us to keep remembering. Several times in the Bible, especially the Old Testament, the Bible keeps on saying, uh, seek to know from the past. Seek to know uh, when God used to do this and that. And so God is God of history. He, God, uh, he built uh, the future and also building on the history. And so when we listen, when I listen to these great men, generals, some of them, when they, from their heart, pours their hearts to tell us how things used to be in terms of revivals, the past revivals, the, the, mass, uh, the mass of um, the, the numbers and the, you know, the masses that came to God through their crusades, you know, meetings and all that, the heavy liberation, the burden that they carried for the souls, and even the vivid experience with uh, the, the experience of God in their time, it always makes me feel, I think we need such hunger or the, the deeper thirst to seek more and even to hear God more. Mm. It's not that he is not with us. Yes. It's not that we have not hearing God, but, you know, breaking through to certain uh, parameters. Mm, to certain dimensions. Certain dimensions. Certain levels, certain depths. Yes, yes. When, when I listen to some of your people you are interviewing, saying how God would, would, you know, appear to them and things start happening without actually stage managing and all that, God just appear. It gives me such a desire to see, you know, even more happening to our generation. So is something is happening, but uh, through what we are hearing, there's a call for more. There's a call for more. I, yes. I believe something is yes. going on. Yes, yes. But I think, like you're saying, we are, we are being called to see what was there. Yes, yes, so yes. that we can desire them yes, more. Yes, so yes. that we can have a measuring year, mm -hmm, measuring mm -hmm, stick mm -hmm. into these things. Mm -hmm. Yes, Apostle David Juma. Now, you know here I have to call you Apostle David Juma. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are on the program. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. We were with you uh, when we came up with this Manenos. Yeah, you're right. Several, several. It had been a theme in our hearts for, for a long years. time. Yes. It, it, it didn't just start when the, the Elevate TV started. That's correct. It started, I think, maybe even an inquiry going back into about four years ago. Actually, and then when we met with a couple of other leaders in the city yes. even before elevate television yeah we raised the matter there yeah discussed with some of the key leaders and so the whole matter came up again yeah. tracing mantles yes and uh, maybe those those of us who have kind of tasted a little bit of what the fathers offered as soon as you said tracing mantles a lot of things are very vivid in my mind and uh, so really this has been very, very impacting. And it causes me to see some of the things God has been doing in my life. I can trace the mantle. Mm. Um, maybe I could just mention, when I gave my life to Christ in 1975, as a little boy, nine years, I used to see in a district one time that there was a rally that was going around uh, our, our districts in Kirinyaga, mm. collecting the blind, the lame, and the crippled, putting them in a rory to take them to Thika for a gospel crusade. I didn't know what crusade that was because we were young boys. Only later to discover this was a crusade by Margaret Wangari and Bishop Mulandi. Uh, you know, and can you imagine that collecting people mm. from other districts or counties to take them to Thika for healings? 
The other thing I remember was... Not collecting people with buses to take them to your church. No, 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 no. But no. collecting cripples. Collecting the blind, cripples. The blind and, and the, the lame, lame. And the deaf. To take them to a crusade. Oh, my God. I mean, that left an impression in my mind. You know, kind of asking, what is that, as it were? I remember 1980, specifically, after Saturday 7, uh, Apostle J.A. the late, Murima, came to a little town to do a gospel crusade in Kirogoya. Mm. And I can't remember all the things he preached, but one thing I remember. On Sunday afternoon, there was a dump girl whom he said, how many of you believe this, <laughs> this girl is going to, to speak? That's very, that's very dangerous. I mean, that's very risky. I mean, the kind of yeah. faith I saw. And I was there as a small boy. It was Kaptura. raw faith. Raw faith. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the band that was singing there, uh, the Revival Flames had played the hymns without singing, just instrumentals for an hour. Then he comes to preach. And then he put his hand below the chin and he said, you thou, in the King James, thou dump. Mm. And, you know, deaf devil, come out. And then he put a mic, say, say hallelujah. And the girl said, ha. He said, come on, say hallelujah. Say the halle, under the hallelujah. That time, the girl said hallelujah, the place raptured. Wow. wow. As a 37 primary school leaver, I'm watching that. I think something entered me. Mm. It's very, very powerful. And then later, when I got filled with the Holy Ghost in 83, and then all these camps by Region Beyond Ministry, where we would go. I remember one time in Emma Gauss, the Region Beyond Ministry, Bishop Landy, Bishop Bogo, those guys were amazing, and all the Region Beyond team. And one afternoon, I'm lying on the dormitory bed like this, and I see a vision. I see like a little movie. I saw crippled children dev dump all these you know infirm kids like a movie and it passed and i wondered what is that and i knew and i've never forgotten that means god was saying i've this. never had you say that it's good to have this program. now that's why we are tracing mantles <laughs> <laughs> yeah some things are beginning to come yeah. out <laughs> yeah amen and i saw these kids and I, I kind of felt this is something God wants to see done. Yeah. So the other day, um, maybe let me trace that. In 1983, we went in Nyeri to do a gospel crusade in Hororo, mm. Easter, April holiday. And uh, the last day of the crusade, there was this girl who was dumb. I remembered Murima in the 80s. So I did the same. You so know, you did exactly what you saw him yeah, do. Yeah, what I saw other <laughs> men do. Put my hand below the chin. I said, thou dumb spirit, come yes, out. Amen. I put the mic, say hallelujah. She ruptured immediately and said hallelujah. And the place was chaos. In fact, there was such a move of God. We began giving out handkerchiefs and asking people to bring handkerchiefs. We prayed for them and said, I was there. You are there. Yeah. Take them to the blind, take them to the deaf. And on Monday morning before we left, the the people ran and said there's a grandmother who was blind and after she was given the handkerchief her eyes opened let's go back to kirogoya that's where murima the late came. he came the, here 1980 the, yes you are saying as soon as um the miracles happened the town the town was shaken was shaken what exactly. is the role apostle mm. of the miraculous in the gospel um one of the one of the men of God that you interviewed for mm. this program mm. uh, two weeks ago, he sat me down and said, young man, listen to me. Most of the things that are happening are not fruitful because the people who are doing them, they don't believe in the same. They just want to do spectaculars that are not making impact to the generation. They just want to make their names, just want to make their empires. Then he said, I want to tell you two things. He said, Kenya, he said, Kenya now need not many than seven people ah. who, oh, God would, who would believe the things that they preach and the things that they are speaking mm -hmm. and boldly practice the same, like what Apostle David have just said. Mm -hmm. The things that are being preached and we believe in them, we boldly with all courage go and practice them. He said, God, he will never watch to see his word being put to shame. What God is looking for is people who can take 
the boldness and go to the front, uh, front line and say, this is what the Lord is saying and this is what we are going to do. When we talk about the miracles, today I was actually in, the, in our service preaching about the, the, the power of God and the effect of the miracle. As we understand, I'm a, a result of the same. I'm a, I'm, I'm a result of the miracle. And I was telling people in, in, the, in, the, in Egypt, while we see God performing miracles to change the situation with the Pharaoh, the monarchy of Pharaoh, it was more for the children of Israel. It was not more for the, the, the Egyptians, but more for the children of Israel. Wow. To build a system of faith that can sustain them even in the wilderness. Huh. If you can believe God can... Say that again. Yes. It um, was for... The Israelites... God was creating a system of faith. A system of faith. Mm -hmm. the, the belief system mm -hmm. that can, they can build on mm -hmm. even when they are moving into the wilderness. Look at this. The, the, the Red Sea opening, uh, the billions of gallons of water opening for them to walk through so that they may go to the wilderness. They saw God dealing with the waters. And then they come to a place 40 years where there is no water. They need to cry to get the stone to gush for the water. But because they saw God dealing with the water, they must build a, a, a faith you know, system that God who can deal with the water, he can also deal with the wilderness. He can deal with the desert. And so the miracles for the church, for the generation that we are, are not just for those that are blind, and those that are dumb, God is actually, is a food to the church. Is a food. God is building us through miracle signs, wonders, and a, even supernatural, so that we may believe God, that God of the desert is also the God of the mountains. God of, he is progressively building the church to believe that he is a mighty God. Oh, I can listen to you forever. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> yes. Apostle, yeah. can you hear that? Speak into that. Actually. That if, if, okay, um, if, yeah. could it be why many Christians today are getting lost and not coming to depth and not being able to stand fully is because of the lack of the miraculous. Because picking from what you say, he's saying that Egypt and the plagues and what was going on there was for the was for the children yes, of God yes. to create a belief system within them that could sustain them through the wilderness. Would you apply that to us? Yes, yes. Mm, mm. You know, the Bible says when Paul was in Athens, listen, there are two ways in which people are preaching. <laughs> okay. When Paul was in Athens, he found philosophers, people who love to speak, to talk, to argue about that, and do a show of speech making. So he decided to also make a speech like them. And they, then they said, well, we'll hear you again. This was on Mars Hill. But nothing much happened because he decided to use their method to preach to them. But then after that, he went to Corinth. By the time he gets to Corinth, he tells Corinth in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, that when I came to you, I was determined not to preach to you the gospel using wisdom of men and all this you know, knowledge, mm -hmm. humanistic mm -hmm. knowledge. But rather, I chose the demonstration of the spirit and of power. Mm. And then the Bible says why? So that your faith is based or built on God and not man. So there are two dimensions there. That we don't preach the wisdom of men and speak all these nice Christianese. Mm. There is a place for it when you are equipping, when you are explaining facts, when you are telling what the Bible say, five things the Bible say, that's good. But... There's the other way, which is demonstration of the Spirit. One time I was in an apostolic class as a visitor in America, and one prophet, the late Tom Morrison, he said, if you can preach and teach for 30 minutes, then you can also demonstrate what you just taught for another 30 minutes. So that's the key. And, and I think now you agree, mm, both mm, of you, mm. that the preaching of the gospel must be accompanied by demonstration. Now, Bonke mm -hmm. himself, who manifested great power in Africa, said, in his book, Evangelism by Fire. Preaching a no-miracle gospel creates no-miracle zones. Say yes. that again. Yes, yes, yes. Preaching a no-miracle gospel creates no-miracle zones. So some churches, congregations, they are not miracle zones because the gospel preached there 
does not produce miracles. What it, about the, this theology going on around that we should not pursue miracles? You see, you see, and, and, and I think they are correct mm -hmm. if we pursue miracles alone. But doesn't it look like therefore there is no gospel or the preaching of the gospel is not complete? If, if, if we look at the, the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. John, yeah. The appearance of Christ, the appearance of Jesus in every city, in most cases, he first began by performing a miracle. Because miracles opens a city. Kushtua, the opens city. Opens a city. <laughs> <laughs> it breaks locks. Yes. Yeah. Because we need to understand that we are not preaching to people who have been sitting waiting for us to come and tell them, now this is the way. Mm. They have been actually, you know, radicalized by other religious philosophies and other kind of faith and all that. They have been convinced. That's what the, we need the, the power of the Holy Spirit for the conviction. Because the people we are, Jesus knew that he is going to face the Pharisees, he is going to face the mm. Sadducees, he is oh, going to, yeah. fa to face mm. the philosophers, mm. he is going to face men mm. who have been actually made to believe that Jesus is not the Messiah. And so how else would he break through into the soul of the man if it is not by demonstration of the supernatural power of God? I, I, there, is a, there is a contrast, there is a that argument of uh, people gathering for miracles, which we also need to look at it in a certain way. But anywhere Jesus went, in any city Jesus went, even in his own town, the Bible says he only performed one miracle. So any town he went, he performed a miracle to open the dimensions of people starting now understanding the supernatural Something power new of God. has come. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And be open exactly. to it. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. Actually, I can see you really, yeah, you really yeah, want to come I, in. I'm provoked. Yes. <laughs> Actually, what happens is mm -hmm. not necessarily that we should pursue miracles. No. Mm -hmm. We should pursue Christ. Christ. Anytime you preach Christ and him crucified, who is Jesus? What did he do? Yes. What did he come to do? What should you do with him? What, what, you know, can you open your heart to him? Exactly. He is here. And as you are talking about Christ, by the way, you don't even need to uh, tell people much about miracles. If you just pray in that name you are preached about, yes. you will hear reports. That, Amen. oh, when I was, I remember preaching in Waidaka the day uh, that week when our daughter was being born, 1998. And she has never forgot. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> she, she had not come. She was supposed to be born. The DJ came, and two weeks she's still waiting. I mean, and there was this gospel rally. So, me, I went to the gospel rally. I tell you. And uh, she was in the hospital. And then, when I'm preaching the gospel, then when I finished and prayed and asked for testimonies, a woman came and said, Look, when you are preaching, I had the voice of God tell me I'm healed and I've had a heart condition. It killed my uncle. I've had the same and now I'm healed. I have just discovered I'm different and everything. So we began to celebrate that miracle before we even we prayed for her. Mm. It, so what should happen? It's not really pursuing miracle. It's actually investigating what gospel people are preaching. People are very nice topics. People are very nice. Oh my God. If you, if you summarize the headings of messages being preached from January to December, uh, four Sundays every month, and just look at the headings, you'll be surprised that very little is being preached about Christ. And that's why there are no miracles. So if we preach Jesus Christ, mm. he will do what he's supposed to Absolutely. do. Absolutely. God comes yes. to confirm his word. Mm. He doesn't come to confirm anything else. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Not oh, our amen. own stories, not our own words. Yeah. He confirms his oh, word. That's okay. He signs wonders and miracles. Mm, that God comes to confirm his word, yeah. not our words. Absolutely. Wow. Amazing. And uh, I agree with Apostle Charles Donga that going to a city, Philip went to Samaria. These guys had never heard the gospel. I mean, he went to the power of the Holy Ghost and he brought joy in the city. Yes, yes, you know, yes, yes, yes. And I've seen over the years where, where God begins to heal, where God begins to deliver. I mean, and do supernatural things. Uh, one time we were in Karatina, 1989, doing a gospel crusade. And we were helping a church that be planted. And there were many people. And I, I was making the altar call. And you know, you ask how many people want to get saved after hearing the gospel. 10, 15. Right, they are here. Then we began to pray for the sick. A woman had a long goiter. You know, the, the thing was so swollen. As we prayed, boom, the thing dropped off. The curve was restored. God is amazing. God. Hey, praise Do you God. know when the place ruptured in power? I made another altar call in the midst of that. Another 60 people got saved. So we need miracles. Exactly. We need miracles. 
We need miracles. The gospel cannot be preached in another way. How are you going to enter into villages that are already mesmerized by the powers of this world without preaching Christ and him crucified and the power of the gospel to save and to do all the works of salvation? Wow. Don't give up. Keep seeking Christ and keep preaching him. I want us to go to something else right mm -hmm. now, shortly, before we go for a short break. The issue of um, territories. Yeah. God, does God work with territories? Does God have specific assignments for territories? If we can dissect that so that we can be able to put Kenya, this, you know, this thing we are contending for, in this territory so that we can be able to put Kenya right in the middle of that and describe it and define it. What is your thoughts about yes. it? I, I believe that God, uh, God works in different uh, ways as far as territories are concerned or even legions are concerned. And um, if, you look at, uh, if you look at how God works in that manner, different territories, different regions, God lays different people with different mandates. Because we can only understand what God wants to do in a certain place by following the kind of the people he is raising and what he is telling the people. And I believe that uh, what God is doing in Nairobi and the kind of the people that God is raising in Nairobi may not be necessarily uh, the same with Mombasa or even Kampala or even uh, you know, uh, New York or even Lagos, Nigeria. In every region, there is territorial spirits, territorial gov governments, territorial uh, powers that dominate that place. And so when God is raising a prophet in a certain place and give him a word, he gives him a word for that to loom, to, uh, because God is setting systems that he is going to use so that he may be able to unlock certain legions. And um, if you look at... Uh, even during the time of Jesus, he, he told them not to leave Jerusalem until they receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Interesting. Not to leave Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And when they received the Holy Spirit, he gave them mandate to go to, uh, the Bible says, go to the Jerusalem, you know, Judea, Garil, and, uh, you know, certain specific, certain specific regions. And then he comes back in the book of Acts and he says, separate for me Paul and Barnabas, that they may go and do what I call them for. And where they were, were they sent? They were sent to the Gentiles. Different people are laced for different religions for different purposes and, and the reasons. But having said that, uh, one cannot say I'm just called in Nairobi and, uh, or God has given me Nairobi and nobody can come to Nairobi, nobody can tune me. But, uh, God is raising people. And he can actually intertween. He can intertween graces and anointings for the, for the purpose of bringing the fulfillment of the mandate of the gospel. Thinking about religions, um, I have just heard, especially we are in Africa, where you go to certain places, you hear that this place is dominated by witch doctors. You go to other, other places, you hear this place is actually very immoral. You go to other places here. This, but in every religion, God is raising prophets with a message for that religion. I mm -hmm. think, I think uh, that would be my, my okay. comment on that. So what kind of people therefore need to be raised in this kind of a territory to deal with this territory in this generation? Um, and I think you will have to talk about there for what we are dealing with in this territory. What you're saying is a very serious matter, deep, but also controversial. Yeah, absolutely. Because some absolutely. people don't believe in what you're talking about. However, let me put it this way. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the one that opens regions. Uh, any place where the gospel is preached genuinely, the power of God will move. And what happens is, the first people to enter into places sent by God are the people God uses to open up the place. And the prayers they make, the churches they plant, the conferences they do, the people they pray for, people they anoint. And though they leave, they already leave certain authorities, certain presence in that area. Mm -hmm. That when other people come, they will build on that. Paul says, 
that he desired that he does not build another man's foundation. In Romans 15, he says he always sought to go to regions beyond, regions that no one else had labored, so that he could open those mm-hmm. regions. Mm-hmm. So that wherever he would open is like laying a foundation. He goes to another place, opens, he lays a foundation. Then others can come and build. And then he says in First Corinthians 3 verse 10, be careful how you build so that you don't destroy what yes. had been done. Now, here in this jurisdiction of Kenya, we have those men of God in the 40s. We had the stories in the tracing mantles. In the 50s, uh, up to recent in the 60s and 70s, who really labored in this region and here in the city, and powerful things were done. Now, that work that they did is still there in the spirit. Amen. We who came in later in the late 80s here in the city, we just come in to mm. build on a foundation mm. we found mm. And no minister should proudly think he's the one now taking the city. True. That's, that's completely lack of humility. No one is taking. The cities were taken by the fathers <laughs> who went before. That's right. Amen. You know, that's right. because we also know uh, in the opposite of that, there are certain little cities in Kenya we hear a certain man of God went, the bishops and the leaders did not receive that man of God. Mm. And he spoke like a curse over that city. And... Uh, dust into the dust of his feet and those towns are struggling up to now yes it will be necessary for the current leaders in those areas to gather together in repentance and prayer and probably send delegations to such men of god are still alive and tell them we are sorry for not receiving you or if he's not alive find another man of god that is of great influence in the spirit mm. to come and reverse and like the way you know jacob said reuben you shall not excel Moses later says, you know, Ru- let Reuben leave. So and, those and transactions you, I, I'm are I'm not, not to cut you, but we're just about to go for a break. Yes. But I think you are saying a very huge thing. It's a very serious matter. That there are regions, there are villages, mm. there are towns, yeah. there are cities that did not receive the gospel, did not receive sent people by God. Right. People God sent. And people, you know, placed a, a, a blanket, a caveat are forbidding mm. in those villages. Mm. Mm. Oh my God. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. And uh, it's very serious. Another day we were praying with key leaders in the body of Christ somewhere, you know, in a, an apostolic prophetic round table. And the Lord said something that shocked us. He mm-hmm. said, God wants to bring a revival and awakening in our region, but the leaders don't want. Oh my God. We have to be very careful when we come together as leaders pastors fellowships or bishops fellowships or this kind of stuff Th- these are amazing opportunities for those men and to I think labor you're just, together you're going ahead of ourselves oh my God. and that what you've just said is so major it's something we really need to dig into mm. and we are going to come back and deal <laughs> And start so to I dig, hang it there. Hang it mm, there. Right. Just I'll, hang in there. I've been told to hang it hang there. In mm. there <laughs> so, so that we can come to this matter. God wants to move. But at but what? Leaders are not interested. Leaders oh. are not interested. They are Jesus. the ones who are hindrance to that. Move. Oh my God. I'm sure you want to go there. Especially prophetic intercessors, prayers, apostles and all kinds of leaders and church people who have a burden for God to move in this nation. This is a program for you. This is a place to be ignited, to get a burden, to get revelation, to get understanding. We are going to be back very, very shortly. Don't go away. See you soon. Welcome to the Festival of Hope. We are hosting this celebration and a moment to bring the gospel is a five day tent meeting. And we are looking forward for you coming, men, women, youth, children, leaders, everybody. And we are also hosting evangelist John T.L. Marshback from the Johann Marshback Ministries in Netherlands, in The Hague. It's the most wonderful life. 
love story you have ever heard. This is the time that the church needs and the people need hope from God. God has prepared for us a wonderful festival that we may come and rejoice in his presence. Wamama, waze, na hata waibaji. Wakuje tumushangirie Yesu. And I'm asking all pastors and every person to come as we proclaim the gospel of power. Young people who are there, young mothers, parents who are there, this is a meeting to bring healing to your life and to your family. Great things are going to happen you shouldn't miss. We are saying welcome to Kasarani. We look forward to see you. Don't miss out in the festival of hope in this Nairobi North. <laughs>
in the name of Jesus. Amen. Something awesome. will come. Amen. From. Yeah. Amen. 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 Now, when we, we before we went for the break, you had said something very dangerous. You told me to hold it, and I'm you still holding. Hold it now and hold. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's like one time, sometime when you are using the phones and whatever. Yeah. You copy, and uh, you you cut or you copy, and you need to paste. Sometimes I used to say it is still on the finger. You know, so I don't want I don't want to touch it. Yes, yes, it yes, goes. yes. Then you touch it. First. Anyway, uh, <laughs> you know, the Lord told us in one of the meetings, mm -hmm. in our apostolic prophetic gathering in prayer, that look, certain leaders do not want the move of God. Mm -hmm. I don't know why that is, but we appreciate pastors' fellowships. They yeah. do a great job because anytime leaders come together, combine the the graces, the anointing, where there is unity, powerful things will open, regions will open up. But conversely, if a religious spirit attacks a pastor's fellowship and they begin to become like a group of Pharisees, sorry to say these are strong words, and they stop the move of God, mm. they, they begin to stop those who want to come to their regions to do meetings, they begin to charge I know what I'm they talking about. They begin to do what? Oh, Jesus. What did you just say? Yeah, they, they need certain certain amount of money to be facilitated to allow you to come in. To allow mm. you to enter at the territory Abs where they are. Mm. Absolutely. Oh, my God. I will not mention names no, or we, no, regions. We, yes. But I've been to places wanting to do a major meeting in an area. And the pastor's fellowship said, no, we have to do this and that, you know, which we are not You have to, to fulfill do. these requirements, yeah. some of them which are not necessarily friendly to yeah, the gospel. Yeah. yeah. Everybody will say they want a meeting, but then on the background, they will begin to oppose the same meeting. Mm -hmm. But we have credible people that are amazingly opening up their regions and God is doing powerful things. Let's concentrate on those because these others, God will visit them and fathers will correct <laughs> them. Praise God. Mm -hmm. So that we don't spend so much energy on a few uh, bad apples probably we are faced in the gospel. Particularly those of us who are traveling in different places doing the gospel. So God wants to move in every territory. And there are certain people who carry certain type of anointings when they come into an area, things will shift. The powers that were opposing uh, the people there will give way because the people coming, they are carrying an apostolic mandate, a prophetic mandate, a heavy duty kind of an anointing. They have an accumulation of grace. You see, when an old man who's been the gospel for many years shows up to minister, it's not like a young man who's been preaching for five years. That's right. Both have the word of God, but the older <laughs> father has not only the word, but an accumulation of spiritual bonga points. Uh, well, I was with you when we were given the testimony. I'm not I'm yeah. just interjecting. No, it's okay. Then you pick up from there. When we were given the testimony of this man who was fasting for many days, seeking God concerning a matter, then he went to visit the man, the man of God, mm -hmm. the late uh, Benson, Idahosa, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and he was given something to eat. And he refused. He refused. He told the man of God, no. He's fasting. I'm fasting. I can't eat. I was so amazed at the answer the man of God, Apostle Donga. Mm. They are men and men. Yes. Yeah. They are men of God and men of God. Wow. The man of God said, no, as long as you come here where I am, me, I stand before God. <laughs> Your prayers are answered. Your yes. prayers are answered. So it. So it. So the man is, mm -hmm. and his prayers were answered. Yes. Because he came to a man. So you are saying they are men. What needs to happen, Who as Pastor they, Sunta? Sorry, sorry. What yeah. needs to happen, Pastor mm. Sunta, mm. is for every pastor, every leader, every man of God, a leader of a denomination church or whatever, to prayerfully ask the Lord to reveal who are these carriers of yes. these graces yes, of yes, God yes, 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 that yes. if they visited our region and we received them with honor and openness in our heart, something that has not happened before will happen or we will receive divine speed to accomplish what we are accomplishing quickly and faster. Because you need one another. Absolutely. I mean, you know what happened to our church here in the Apostolic House when Apostle John Ali from Australia came here, just preached a simple message on the spirit of understanding and released the anointing of peace. Just a simple prayer. I'm telling you the truth. No more, nobody quarreling with nobody. The mm -hmm. peace of God just will release, release and understanding and mm -hmm. such grace mm -hmm. in the church, mm -hmm. just in a small way. But you can imagine 
uh, when these fathers went into a place, you remember the first tracing mantles we did, and how the, of course, Apostle Kai went to Sudan and what happened, you know, there, because he's a carrier of something. And, and that leads me to my next point mm. concerning that matter. Okay. I'm seeing uh, regions that are gridlocked by s religious systems. I believe that, and I don't know what you think, Maybe the way to put it is a question. Mm -hmm. Don't you think it is, that it is possible for there to arise men who cannot be locked out? Mm -hmm. well, uh, who can <clears throat> overthrow the systems? This, this brings me to, to something in my mind. Uh, Apostle David would remember when we started preaching in Nyeri and the other regions when we were very young. And most of us, we were not raised from a Pentecostal churches or even uh, the apostolic churches. We, were, we got born again from somewhere where there was no, we were not allowed to speak in tongues. Okay. We were not allowed to uh, even to pray shouting. Mm -hmm. We were not allowed to, uh, you know, to lift our hands up and all that. Some of us even were like, I was in Nyeri this week and I passed through Geshera police station where I was locked for seven days because of the preaching the gospel that I have baptized people uh -huh. without, my, without the permission of the, some leaders. Mm -hmm. But that, this is what happened. After the revival that was there, Apostle was talking about the clippers and the, the, the blight and all that. Collect. After that revival, then certain religious spirits, certain religions or denominations started actually, you know, putting uh, a fence, allowed their beliefs, allowed all that. So what, what, did, what happened in our time? God actually showed up be, through the back door. <laughs> when the leadership was not aware, we were filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm. And we started speaking in tongues on, on their services, and we were kicked out. And this is what, was, what is going to happen. When people start actually building, allowed themselves, allowed their beliefs and their cultures and the traditions of the denominations and all that. God he is the same yesterday, today and forever. He's mm. gonna use the back door. And all of a sudden you hear revival happening in the stadiums. And you start asking, are these not the young people? Are these not the, 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 the young women? Are these not the people we were actually assisting to speak? Because God is not going to be contained by man's wisdom. God is not going to be contained. Yeah. He is not going to be contained. Amen. And so, what, and man's systems. And man's systems. Mm -hmm. And what is going to happen, uh, as Apostle David has said, let the, the, <laughs> let, the mm. let the leaders keep on actually resisting revival. Yes. God is just giving people chance because he, he is the father. He, he is God of, of us all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that when the time expires, God will not be contained by any mindset or any, any tradition. Amen. In the Old Testament, he, they put God in a box. <laughs> and they carried the box for some time. Yes. But as time came and God jumped out of the box. Yes. And he went to the <laughs> temple. Yes. They came up with the, the, the programs and the philosophies and the you know, beliefs in the temple yes. to contain God only for the Jews. Yes. As time went on, the time expired. Yes. And God jumped out of the temple. Bless the Lord. And <laughs> even in the time when Jesus is coming, yes. we finally find John the Baptist. He is no longer, uh, he, is, he is called after the name that mm. is not in the lineage yes. of the priesthood. Yeah. He is actually not leaving the temple. He's not eating the, the priestly food. He is at the shores of the uh, liver Jordan and uh, calling masses to the kingdom. And that's where they met with his cousin Jesus. And things happen. What, what, what the, 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 the high priest said about Jesus, where has he gotten this authority? Where has he gotten this wisdom? Where is things, he coming from? Where is he coming from? Let me tell you, there is no system. There is no um, uh, traditions or customs or man-made. Humanistic. No, yes. System that, that will contain God that, when the time and expires. That can resist Him. That can resist Him. Oh, glory. And I'm, I'm having a feeling we are not very far from Amen. that, you know, that uh, breaking forth. Something is going to break forth. Because look at the time of COVID, Apostle. Mm -hmm. the COVID when the COVID came, so many things happened. Now we know that uh, uh, 
people, God can visit people without even actually meeting on Sunday. The churches were locked down. Mm -hmm. But God still ministered to us. I was telling people the other day that um, even during the lockdown and the COVID and all that, God still ministered to his church because we are the Christ bride. And if Jesus is the most, the one of the most faithful, uh, uh, <laughs> faithful uh, bridegroom. He takes care of his wife. And so I'm sensing something, and not many days from now, that is going to happen. Some of this we call, you know, the, the, the pastor's fellowship. We, we, we thank God for that. Some, you know, Apostle, I went to preach in Zimbabwe. And I think we are a part of those fellowships. We, are, we, are, part of we yes. are part of that. We went, I went to preach in Zimbabwe, just to put something. I went mm -hmm. to preach in Zimbabwe, and I was given a chance to minister to, to in, a, in, a, in a men's fellowship. And um, most of the, it was, a, it, uh, in the morning was preaching, the afternoon is an open on an open forum. Most of the questions that were coming forth, you find men that are actually grieved, heart, heartbroken, you know, pain, you know, they're almost divorcing their wives and all that. And as the question kept on coming, the Lord spoke to me. He said, but how comes the authorities are asking questions that themselves are supposed to answer? Mm. Because the, the madit, the assignment of the marriages and the family are given to the husbands. And then mm -hmm. I felt like the hospital is telling me, stop all this human, you know, uh, just because it's an open forum, the question has to be answered. And then I got the wisdom and I told the men, you know what? God is waiting for us as men to tell him wh what we want our families to be. Stop these questions. Let us all stand, hold hands together, and petition heaven and say, we want our wives to be like this. We want our children to be like this. We want our, you know, our families to be like this. And amongst the people who are there, the, 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 the two pastors had already you know, separated their wives. And then we said, we are even going to call those that are separated back home, and there will be peace. I stopped that forum, you know, questioning and answering and all that. I said, let us petition heaven. We are the authority. And let me tell you, a few, few, uh, uh, few months later, and I went back, I found the wives of the pastors who had actually deserted the houses, they have come back and they have asked for, uh, uh, for forgiveness, and they are happy in their family. I was looking at what you are saying. When the men of God comes together, when we discover and realize that we are the custodians, we are the carrier of what God is intending to do in our generation, and then we stop all these shenanigans and all that, and then come to understand to our position, petition heaven, things will start to happen. Revival will start to mm. happen. I, I can see people, you a little. Any group of people yeah. that come together, yeah. either pastor's fellowship or bishops, or even a local church, mm. or even men mm. like those, or women, mm. the reason must be to pray and petition heaven, as he say, for his glory to come, his word to come, his direction to be released and his Holy Spirit to be given away. Not to be political, religious, no. and hinder. And the seek to hinder the move of God. Absolutely. You know um, how this, any church or fellowship or coming together people, how it becomes a hindrance. It begins first with a revival and a move of God. And then we constitutionalize. We create seats. We create positions. Then we raise the money and the resources and facilities begin to show up and then power games begin. We we'll control the money and then we begin to say, now that you are the one controlling, we give you two thumbs. When you are this age, you retire, let somebody else take over. As soon as it becomes an institution, then the revival goes out of the window and then the church is left with a shell. So right now we need to say, we can see the signs uh, of how the move of God has been lost because of the institutionalizing Christianity. The next move of God, which we are smelling, sensing, seeing right now, is going to be outside the institutional Christianity. I believe so. Um, and during the time of COVID, something good happened, as Apostle is saying, that now people have discovered God is able to move. And by the way, some leaders have found it easier now to work with others because they discovered exactly. one can leave the earth and you are buried in 72 hours, even your relatives will not show up in the burial. In other words, so now that I'm alive, we better work with others. That's right. And I'm glad that churches are beginning to work together. That's right. That's people right. are coming together for one agenda, the kingdom. It's no longer who is uh, going with the money, who is writing minutes, 
uh, who is uh, you know going with us and, and so forth and so forth and so we must reorganize fellowships groups churches and so forth and make the kingdom agenda the number one agenda Amen. to seek the face of God Amen. in prayer and fasting and praying and waiting upon the Lord Amen. and saying Lord what are we gonna do in our area what are we gonna uh, as soon as leaders begin to do that putting our face on the ground and seeking God again thank God the prayer centers are increasing in this country and people are going back to pray Amen. we are going to see a move of God in our city. The and then God the is a I like what Apostle Charles said God always knows how to leave the box leave the temple yes leave, I pray he doesn't leave the church you know where we are yeah, but but if we also are boxed, uh, he will go if we are also mm. rough and if we, exactly. if we lock if we uh -huh. lock exactly. the city uh -huh. exactly. exactly. circumvent exactly. absolutely Deventry. and god by his holy spirit has begun to pick up certain younger voices or ministers that are beginning to move with such grace and power and some people are asking, where are these ones coming from? Amen. We haven't seen nothing. God is going to raise another generation you haven't seen before. I think ours is to create a wineskin. An environment. And an environment mm. where any time we see somebody God is using, we just give them wisdom, mentor them, nurture them, give them permission, you know, bless them, you know, support them. Even if they don't come from anywhere close to our ministries or denomination, mm -hmm. let them do the work Amen. of God. Amen. And we are going to see a saturation and a mighty, mighty fire. So we have to be very careful to recognize that this is not a high school where we have principals and headmasters mm -hmm. and hand whoever's mm -hmm. who lock things. Because if I remember, most of the fathers that we have talked to have warned us greatly. They have said, please note, Every time God moved in this nation, he moved out of the system. And you know, wow. they also said, as long as you are born again, then you get filled with the Holy Spirit. You are ready for work. Yeah. And that's what happened to us. I mean, yes. I was in high school when mm -hmm. I got filled with the Holy Spirit. That same week, I began preaching. Mm -hmm. That wasn't like, where have you been trained? Who, who is where? Who do you come? You know, and so forth. I mean, witness on the streets. Share the gospel. And as we were sharing the gospel, we were getting saved, we were crying, miracles were happening. You know, I remember one time in high school praying for somebody who had lost their teeth and the gums and become so black and because of too many, you know, dental uh, medications and so forth. And right there on the pulpit in high school, the gum changed from black to red. Wow. And the teeth became strong. Mm. Oh, late, for more. We need to ask uh, for and, more. <laughs> and uh, all of a sudden, the dentist a uh, week later said that that problem that was there for four years for that student was sorted Amen. just by the power of God, just Praise like the name that. Of the Lord. You know, in other words, God was using ordinary people. Amen. Every believer. Yes. I think we messed it up when we began to say, Kalajiman. God is using everyone. If you are just joining us, this is tracing the mantles. We are just saying, let the leaders release the estates, release the villages. Don't allow yourselves to be a pastor's fellowship, a leader's fellowship that locks out those who even would be of help to you because you are gatekeepers. Gatekeepers are supposed to keep gates for the Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us and keep, you know, responding, keep writing to us. We're going to get back to you shortly. We just want to go into another matter, mm -hmm. Apostle, mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. Gen a generational matter, mm -hmm. a generational issue. Yeah. I'm thinking that the Lord is the one that changes generations. Are you sensing a, a, a movement where a, a, a generation is coming on? Mm. Um, <clears throat> the, if, if a revival is ca uh, characterized into certain dimensions. Uh, if you look at uh, the Azusa Street revival, you find after that there was ma quite a massive, uh, you know, less part to salvation, miracles, you know, salvation and all that. I remember the the revival of seventies with Apostle Dr. Kayo and the, the rest. What happened after many people came to the Lord and uh, now almost everywhere there is salvation, message of salvation. There was a need for foundation. There was a need for the teaching grace. There was a need for foundation. 
Because when people get born again and they come to church, they also need to be discipled. I believe in my heart that uh, in the next generation, there will be an outpour of such a conviction. Because you see now, apostolic and prophetic uh, arms in the kingdom has been restored. And so the government, the, the, the government, the kingdom authority is going to be felt in the next revival. The problem we have is that we tend to always expect revival to look the same. What um, Catherine Kuhlman could do in her time, we want to lace to do like her. But every time God brings a revival or, or the, the, the move of God, it is actually given because God responds to the dust and the hunger of the day. He feeds the hunger of the day. And so the hunger that we have, because you see, even uh, uh, you know, we are in the digital world, the, the world there has grown to certain other dimensions. And so I, I think the revival we are expecting is going to, to answer more on innovations, the world of science, the world of, you know, even because we cannot talk about the gospel now from where we are without also talking about the the finances. So there will be an addition. There will be an, there'll addition. Be an addition to what is traditionally known exactly. as a move of God. Exactly. But it will include what is new. Exactly. Mm. I'm looking forward to having powerful men and women of God preaching on the pulpit and at the same time mm -hmm. having very powerful yeah. men and women in the marketplace. Yeah. Amen. The marketplace, because these two, we are priests and, priest and the kings. And so the kingship and the priesthood, uh, there must be an, that incorporation. Amen. And so the revival we are expecting is not just about in the church pulpit and the it's believers. It's everywhere. It is everywhere. It's a revolution. It's, exactly. Amen. Exactly. Exactly. Apostle David, um, what generations do you think are present right now in the gospel? How many, if you will? We don't have to be very, very, um, like very restricted. You can speak in a fluid way. Yeah, I guess the men of God who were preaching in the late 60s and early 70s, we would now call them the first generation for us. Yeah. And a few 60s of, and 70s. Maybe yes, a little earlier, are, I don't know. Some of them are still alive. Yeah, mm. yeah. several are. Several are. Yeah. Then the second generation are those who came in mid-70s uh, and went into the 80s. So that could be the second generation. The third generation should be those who in late 80s and early 90s. Uh, who were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to move. I think we are in the third generation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a fourth generation because when we began preaching and moving and so forth, there are those that have come after us who are in the fourth generation. And they are the ones that have just planted churches a few years ago. They are now just beginning to be heard. Some of them are not yet known, but if you hear them, you will hear our voice. Mm. When you hear us, you hear the voice of those who are preaching in the 70s. When you listen to those in the 70s, you hear the voice of those who are preaching in the late 60s. So I think we are in the third generation, then there is a fourth generation. Well, if there are those who are preaching in the 50s who are alive, then we are in the fifth generation. And again, we may not know who they are, because those who are the uh, pre-dependence group, and most of them have gone to be with the Lord as it were. So this is what I see. Uh, Paul alluded to this in 2 Timothy chapter 2. He said, uh, the word you have received from me, what you have heard from me, uh, pass this to faithful men. So Paul is the first generation talking to Timothy, second generation, to pass to the third generation called faithful men who will teach others also. So mm. there is a generation of the others, yeah. which is the fourth generation. Mm. You know, there was this little story because, uh, you know, we are always <laughs> having one or two stories. Uh, one of my brothers has a little son who is my nephew. And when he was seven years playing outside his house, the house of their parents, he hears a voice, preach the gospel. So the boy rushes back to the fathers 
to the father in the house. He says, Daddy, what is preach the gospel? I've just heard preach the gospel. Later, he has an encounter with the Lord Jesus, mm. and he's told he will preach to four generations. Wow. That boy is not in high school yet. He's still in lower primary, mm. but he's been told he's going to preach the gospel in the, ne in the fourth generation. I'm looking forward. Oh my God, a Kazoga, ye Messiah. Glory to God. Mm. I'm looking forward for, you know, one of my friends uh, in Holland, all their grandchildren, 18 of them are in full time ministry. I mean, I'm looking forward that in this country we're going to see the next generation of our children. My Jesus. Moving such power more than we ever saw. And then they are children. In other words, you are grandchildren, Apostle mm. Charles. Mm. Whatever your son and daughter is, need to hear now they are being aligned mm. and prepared for what Amen. God is about to do. Amen. Thank you. And I think Amen. in our generation, one of the Amen. things we must do, we have a greater responsibility. The first generation demonstrated and preached Christ. The second generation not only demonstrated but also taught and discipled. Mm. Our generation, we also have to manifest miracles, yes. teach and disciple, but now also we must reorder and structure a kind of a structure that will not hinder the move of God. I need to say that again because this is by revelation. The first generation, they preached the gospel with miracles, signs and wonders. They did not even teach as much. Yes. They preached one message. Mm. No wonder Bonk in those days said that evangelists do not look for a message. The message is one. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today and yes. forever. Yes. And you are good to go. Yes. Preach that in Mombasa, preach that in Kisumu, mm. preach it in South and Africa. And it worked. And it worked. Yeah. But the second generation of the 80s began to 70s and 80s began to teach mm. in addition. Yes. So you teach, then the power begins to move. Now, when we got into the next generation, they also going to do the miracles, also teach, are we together, and disciple. But this time, also find how we're going to create a wine skin, an infrastructure, so that those who are coming out of us will be able not to be killed. Uh, and die because they don't know what to do. Mm. Uh, a while ago, the Lord spoke to me to create a young minister's forum, and I had a meeting yesterday with uh, you know many young people who are asking me questions. What do we do in ministry? How do we start? And these are not members of our ministry. I just opened it up. And right now we have in the WhatsApp group 160 plus ministers of the gospel asking me questions. And we Young ones. Young ones. Mm. The next generation. Yeah. Some of them are 25. Wow. Mm. Some of them are 30. They're asking me, how are we going to do this? So we not only need to demonstrate to them the power of God, but we also need to give them wisdom on how are they going to structure ministries. Right now you can't register a ministry in mm. Kenya mm. because of the government, whatever. We hope the next government will open up that. So how are they going to preach? Where are they going to preach? Are they, the the structures they are in in the local churches enabling them or are they killing them and not caring mm. are we the leaders who are in the church right now are we creating an atmosphere and an environment where the next generation can serve or are we keeping the pulpit is one pulpit one preacher and nobody else nothing else mm. and if we do that then when you die you die with your thing mm. but we need to be an apostolic prophetic people beginning to see the future the mass that god is raising and begin to prepare them now and i'm excited that god has raised this third generation to look if you look at the church 500 years ago in history martin ruther restored the revelation of the just shall live by faith 500 years ago he had no other revelation when you study martin ruther he even didn't do away with the sacraments yeah. But at least he got the revelation of salvation. Yes, yes. Now, when the Azusa Street and the, um, the, the second outpouring of the Holy Spirit brought the speaking tongues and filled with the Holy Ghost. So, salvation 500 years ago, Akina John Wesley preached and so forth 200 years ago and so forth. There wasn't much of that. But when Azusa Street in America, when they began to speak in tongues, that was an addition. Later, the charismatic movement that you know, can not only speak in tongues, but we can move in gifts of the Spirit. Yes. Healing, word of knowledge, word of wisdom. And we, we saw that. By the time we were coming up in the gospel in the 80s, we could hear word of knowledge, word of wisdom, prophecy. All that was an accumulation from the restorations. Mm. The revelation of mm. God is progressive. Glory God is God. always revealing himself to a generation. One of the things we need to ask is, in our generation, what is the unique message and revelation that God is restoring? Because before Jesus comes back, 
we have to have the church the bride of Christ full of power full of glory mm. without wrinkle not old mm. and uh, kind of defeated by the systems of the world it doesn't matter how much technology comes in how many viruses show up build COVID it doesn't matter there is a generation that has power from above that is going to bypass the system of the beast mm. and the system of the devil and let me tell you the church something it doesn't matter how many beasts are rising up the gospel can never be defeated by the beast and the devil the Amen. gospel is more powerful Amen. Are being changed Amen. and transformed by the gospel mm. of Amen. Jesus Christ. Mm. Listen, Jesus will not come for a weak, defeated church being swallowed by the beast and the and the enemy and Satan, and so <laughs> we are just escaping before we are finished by the death. If you look at the messianic messianic prophecies, that the glory of the Lord is gonna fill the earth as the waters as cover, waters the, cover sea. the sea, yes, yes. that his kingdom, the yeah. increase of his government has no end. Amen. In other words, his authority yes. is increasing. So Amen. as we draw near to the coming of the Lord, the church will be more powerful, more overcoming, Amen. more taking over. And as Apostle Charles said, people will not only operate in the pulpit, but also in the marketplace, in politics, in creative arts, you know, in sports, Jesus. everywhere. Believers full Amen. of the Holy Ghost and disciples. And it's not just the reverend and the clergy. And this clergy thing, we have to adjust it. In the Apostle Prophetic, we've got to adjust that Amen. thing so that every believer is a priest unto God, manifesting the power of God fully in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, I, I, I think I was entranced. <laughs> mm. I feel fire, my friend, in the house of God. Glory to God. Mm. So, mantles are mm. passed, therefore, mm. from generation to generation. Yeah. 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 And every generation must understand their mantle, the mantles they carry, mm. and make sure that they safely pass it to the next generation. And recognize where they got it from. Of course. And not fall down with mm. it. Absolutely. Down, mm. Mm. Pass the button. Mm. Pass it. And so we've got to find out what we received. If we received something that is weak, we've got to strengthen it. Yes. 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 And so that we can be able to pass on. Mm -hmm. And I think every generation has, must take responsibility of the mantle of Christ that is passed on to them. Mm -hmm. Are we together? Mm. I like asking. Are we? <laughs> <laughs> I, yes, forgot. We are together. Yeah, we are together. I forgot. I forgot. As and you, we are together. <laughs> yes. Right here yes. on this day. Yes. I forgot mm. that I was not preaching. And we are also together with the people. Yes. We are also preaching. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and I'm together. sure we are getting quite a bit of mm. some, oh, more, so some, many some responses. Some responses. Mm. If let's want, see, let's if, see of the fellowship if, there. If you want some, we yeah. can read everything. Yes. On Facebook, Alex Mwangi. God isn't going to be contained by men's wisdom. It's true, Alex. Uh, you know, Nahash and Mwangi, the sons of prophets. Yeah. Were the biggest hindrance to the move and operations that Elijah and Elisha were in instituting Listen to the that. next move. Mm. No one can hold God hostage. I'm getting blessed. Yes. Thank you so much, Nash. Sam Juguna there from Kakamega. I'm so blessed of what I'm hearing tonight. Uh, Sam Onjiri in Juguna. The move of God is now progressive. Institutions need very spiritual edged leadership to remain relevant. Yeah. We agree. Yes, yes, Amen. yes. Amen. The gospel cannot be defeated by any beast and the system. God bless you, Alex Mwangi. Of course, on, uh, on behalf of uh, Pastor Sunta, uh, some you know, feedback on um, YouTube. Uh, Friend Muli, Gospel Without Miracles creates miracle-free zones, yes. And uh, someone that he revival may move out of institutions of Christianity. Oh, my God. Someone else says, someone mutua. God bless you and bear the more glory to God. Keep on interacting. Keep on sending your comments before... Uh, we are done tonight. What a show. Pastor Sunta, thank you for bringing us here, you know, to interact with you on this very critical you matter. You're welcome. And my friend, whom we've preached since 1988. Yes, I'm yes, very yes, happy yes. to have the two of you. Mm. I think we need another program. Yeah. I, I, you have superseded my expectations. Wow. Oh, Lord, we, wow. should, we need a cup of tea from her. <laughs> yes, yes. Because, uh, Nini. Yes. <laughs> God have mercy on you. <laughs> this is tracing the mantles. Yes, yes, yes. Whatever you want. Oh, <laughs> if you're joining us, this is tracing the mantles. And I'm sure you're just getting so blessed. Surely, our desire, our desire is that the church may start to awake to what God wants to do. Like the men of God are saying, the concerns, we are just at the verge of a new move, a new dimension, and we give God the glory. Please call your friends, tell them before it, this is over. We are still on and we need everyone. Let's have a huge fellowship, a huge fellowship out there over this matter. 
This nation is our nation. This land is our land. And Jehovah God will be exalted in this country. He will have his way in the name of Jesus. Even if he has to come through the back door, no problem. He will come. Apostle mm. Donga. Praise the name of the Lord. Mm. So, do you think that we have, we are, we are an interceding generation? Or is it that every generation must intercede and bath the next generation in a minute? Um, yes. In, uh, every generation must have the ub for the next generation. And the, the work of the apostles and prophets is to make sure that the ub of the generation is not infected, does not have the infections that can kill what will be contained in that, in, in that ub. And the, the madit of the fathers, or as Apostle David has put it, the madit for last who are in the apostolic prophetic is to make sure that the oops, those that are infected are healed and the people should heal quickly because God is doing a quick work so that uh, this baby, this generation will be birthed in power. Number two is that um, uh, uh, every generation must birth its own uh, Esther for its own salvation and the sustenance and preservation. I was thinking when Apostle was talking, I was, did you say one minute? Yes. Is it over? Just finish. Um, I, was, <laughs> <laughs> Continue. I, was, I was thinking about uh, when he was, actually, you know, I, I like listening to this man yes. because he's a, he's a good teacher. He can actually take you, uh, by the time you realize, the power is here. Yeah. Uh, we have been together since 1988. Um, he prayed for you to be filled with yes, the Holy Spirit. Yes, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm. That was in Geshela. <laughs> Geshela, the yeah. Gospel Crusade. Gospel Crusade. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. powerful. So yeah. many people. I can't you even got remember. filled with the Holy Ghost in a crusade. In a crusade. Wow. I spoke in tongues crusades in a crusade. those days, we were not doing the drama. Yes. yes. Saved, filled yes. the Holy Ghost, healed, yes. delivered, demons come. Glory. Saved. You leave Let's the place and then. ready to minister. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Mm. And so I was thinking about when he was explaining the generational, uh, the, 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 the how this has come to where we are. There's a lot of Moses and Joshua. They said, Joshua seems to be so powerful in fighting battles. And uh, Moses is uh, a supernatural man. He's a miracle-working man. He goes to mountains and come down with, you know. And um, then I, something came to my mind. I said, okay, it, when one generation is operating in its madit, Mm. The other generation mm. must also be incubated and pre uh, being prepared in a different way, but in the same spirit. Have mercy. As, because if you look, Joshua would say, no, Mo Moses did not win any battle. Moses did not fight any battle. But it is when Moses was fighting through the spiritual arms and the, the canopy, the covering that he had given Joshua, that Joshua was being empowered to take his, his assignment. And I was saying, there is a certain generation, there's a certain people, like Apostle have said yesterday, he had a hundred and six something people. There's a certain people that God is actually gathering because he is putting certain people together, certain young people together. As we are doing the thing that we are doing in our time, he is also preparing some people. So maybe never know whether he will give them the sword. We were using the, the shield. Maybe he'll go, he is going to give them a different type of weapons for their, for their time. But what I know is that God has a remnant. Something is going to break forth. I, oh, I forgot about the one minute. I did forget. Oh. I have one question. We are just starting to wind down now. Um, yeah. The apostolic prophetic, um, mm. you know, um, kind of Christianity, the message, yes. Is it where we are going? Not necessarily. Uh, we are where are we through. going? We are passing through there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when the Holy Spirit was poured out on the earth, like yes. on Azusa Street, yes. all those who began to preach were very evangelistic. Just come to Jesus right now. Mm -hmm. He will save you. He will heal you. You'll be ready for heaven. They didn't have more than that. Later, there came up the pastoral grace to teach these mm. who are coming to the church as he showed. Later, we saw the gifts of the Spirit being activated, so prophecy, being one of them, beginning to become very common, that somebody will preach, but he will also prophesy 
accurate things from mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. And even believers will begin to speak in diverse kinds of tongues and interpretations thereof. So we began to see more than evangelism and more than just a local church gathering as a church to disciple people, baptize them in a river, teach them you know, the word of God, but also now moving in the gifts of the Spirit. Then what began to happen is all these fivefold ministry gifts, we have had seasons in which in history there has been an emphasis of a one or two. Mm. And in the late 80s, the prophetic was almost everywhere. And then as we cross into the new millennia, in the, uh, not before the new millennia, in the 90s, we began to hear about the apostles. I mean, myself in 1976, when I followed my father to a mission, we didn't hear anything about apostles. In the 80s, when we were hearing Murima, he was an apostle, yes, but we didn't know what is that about. But late 90s, we had questions. Like, we see the evangelist in Uhuru Park. We see the pastor in the big congregation. But where are the apostles? Mm. Where are the prophets? And when we began asking those questions and preaching that message in 98, 99, 2000, the general church misunderstood. Mm. And what happened was, for the last... I was very 20, scared. Oh, yeah. We, we had a crisis in the city. Even some of the people who were inviting me before, when they had now we are teaching on apostles are coming, prophets are coming, five-fold ministry is going to come. They thought it was cultic and they refused our message. True. 22 years later... Everybody's an apostle now, even briefcase ones. So we thank God for them. <laughs> so we were stoned, yes. praise God. Mm. So listen, but now we are living some of the best time on the earth in mm. church history, where all the fivefold ministry is on earth at the same time. We have credible teachers, we have credible pastors, we have credible evangelists, we have credible prophets and apostles. So where are we going? Mm -hmm. All these are activating now the saints so that the saints mm. can do the work of the ministry. So beyond the fivefold ministry, mm. we are now in the season that time of the saints, oh. where the every saints believer, movement. the saints movement, where every believer now, there are people who are not clergy, they are not pastor, but they are laying hands on sick are being healed. Mm. They are casting out demons, they are going. They are praying for us to be filled the Holy Ghost. Even some are baptizing. In fact, two young men were telling me yesterday in that mentorship class, they were saying, we went to baptize, and we were baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And they said, no, 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 don't baptize in that name. You baptize in the name of Jesus only. So they were asking me, so should, how should we baptize? I told them, baptize like this. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, I baptize you in Jesus' name. <laughs> they loved, you know. So <laughs> it's a time for the saints. Yes, amen. Uh, Thank and you, that's Jesus. why the dichotomy between clergy yes. yeah. and laymen mm. is becoming nil, mm. is being removed. Mm. Unfortunately, there's a section of the church that is taking us to heavy clergy over the church. Mm. Things we couldn't do 40 years ago. Mm. Religious clothing, garments, and whatever, and caps, and uh, you know, shepherd stuff. We're not doing that. The early 70s, we were filled with the Holy Ghost, moving the power, cast out devils, no garments, no nothing. Go take people to the river, baptize them, and preach the gospel. But oh, those now, rivers were bad. Yeah. I so, almost drowned in no, one. No, the waters were very the clear. Waters were... Like where I was baptized in the river, I was coming from Mount Kenya Street. <laughs> so listen, <laughs> you, you are down there and being baptized by other strange rivers. So listen, so we look to have backsliding in some sections of the church and going back to old dogmas, tradition, and so forth, instead of now unleashing, activating the saints so that believers can prophesy, believers can move in power, believers can do the miracles, believers can sh share the gospel, believers can teach other believers in the marketplace, in the church, in the family, everywhere. Jeshi Abwana, the army of the Lord is everywhere. Glory to God. Mm. And look, the church will go to the streets where you just are walking around after work with your little bag going home. Amen. And then there's uh, 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 probably an accident. I remember here in the railways, one time there was an accident. Um, uh, uh, and Nisama tried to hit somebody. And then he lay there. I think was fractured. And people were surrounded. And uh, one of my brothers was passing through. He saw the commotion. He went in. He said, in the name of Jesus, prayed for the man. God healed, stood up. And he put his back, continued, and Jesus. the man was not taken to a hospital. Amen. That's not a reverend. That's yeah. not a bishop. Yeah. He's a believer who believes. We thank God for the bishops because we are. Mm. We thank God for them. May they live forever. 
and they have the role to equip and activate the saints. We tell the saints not to be intimidated. Yes. It is your time. Yeah. Mm. It is your so time. So I'm so excited to yeah. see that picture mm. very clearly. Mm. No, that's that now, is. where we are going to. Mm. Because, you know, we might be stuck not knowing where we are going. Now we are going to the saints movement. Mm. 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 That's the next restoration mm. yeah. that is going to mm. happen. Mm. We must start widening this down now. Mm. I just want you to start to speak prophetically if mm. you will mm. anything the lord is saying yeah. what is he saying mm. what do we what need we do mm. where are we mm. um, you know anything else we we have actually covered uh, quite a uh, you know a, a paradigm quite a a, 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 a heavy matter yeah. in this discussion but uh, even as we are concluding this program my heart is left somewhere on god opening the eyes of this generation to see the, the the things or the depths of God, even the hunger, and that that's because those people that we have talked about, who have talked to uh, who have talked to us through this program, they tell us how they were hungry, how they were thirsty, to not to all this spectacular, not to all these uh, decors and all that, but to experience the power of God to experience the presence of God, to experience the happenings of God. And in our time, we need that thing to be restored. We need that tangible uh, experience with God. Because the young generation, the coming generation, as Apostle David has said, what they need is not new fashions of dressing. They have seen it all. It's not new types of songs and music. They have sung all. What they need now is to experience something with a difference, the power of God. And my prayer today is that uh, we who are actually the custodian in whichever level, you know, <coughs> ranks that we are, we allow people, we allow the saints, we allow the believers to come to that place where they can meet with their God without restriction. And um, may God help us also, we, to be loosed, those who are <laughs> blind, as the readers who are blind also to have their eyes open. Jesus said that a blind man cannot lead another blind man. And so my, may God help us. May God remember us. May God remember our generations. May the oops of the church be healed. May Amen. the oob of this generation Amen. be Amen. healed. May yes, Lord. any infection, any spiritual yeah. infection, Amen. any spiritual bacteria, yes, any mis, uh, misbelief or disbelief, any yes. way of uh, missing mm. the move of God that is actually incubating and breathing in our hearts be uh, furnished away by the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said that the Spirit of God is upon me. He has anointed me that I may preach the gospel. The gospel is the power of God. Yes, we Lord. must restore the true preaching of the gospel of Christ in our time, in our generation, and reveal Christ. Wherever Christ is revealed, he is a miracle worker. Amen. He is a powerful uh, miracle worker. Mm. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Amen. May Amen. The, wombs, the womb of the church be healed. Be healed. That's be what healed. we are saying. Be healed. You are last, some of your yeah. comments. What's I just the Lord want saying? to say that this has been amazing, Pastor Sunta. Thank you for bringing us into uh, the tracing the mantles. I'm hearing the word activate, 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 activate. Every believer that is listening to me, if you have the word of God, and you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. There are certain things the Holy Spirit will prompt you to say or to do at specific places in a time of the day. If you only act by faith and do what the Holy Spirit is telling you, you'll be surprised. You'll begin to see bigger miracles than the ones you have seen with your pastor. You could be seated like Philip on this chariot, uh, and there's this man, and he ends up ministering to a whole treasurer of Ethiopia, that Kadake of Ethiopia, a, a minister of finance in a whole country. So wherever you go, three things I want you not to lose. Interact with the Holy Spirit so that you can be hearing from him. Fill your spirit with the word of God. Read your Bible upside down, down side, right side up. Put that word in your spirit. And guess what? With the word and the spirit, now activate. Act. Glory to God. When you act to pray for the sick, act mm. to cast out devils, act to speak 
you'll be surprised at what is going to happen. Mm. This is a decade of the mouth. But we began this decade of the 2020 to 2030 with our mouth shut for two years. Now it's time to get those masks off in the name of Jesus. Zachariah's mouth was shut for nine months. After that, he was able to speak accurately the name of John. It is your time now to rise up and move. Be activated and you will see the power of God. For this is the time for every believer. Amen. Amen. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Amen. We are so glad, Amen. gentlemen. Amen. It was so wonderful having you. Mm. And I'm sure something is being released out there. Jesus mm. is Lord. Amen. And we are here for him. Mm. We are not just here for ourselves. Mm. We are here for what he is, who he is, and what he must do. Blessed is his holy name. Amen. Would you like to look at that camera and just make a prayer? All right. Mm. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this wonderful time that you have given to us for fellowship and also, Lord, to speak the holocaust and the deep mind, uh, the mind, your mind, oh God, to the people and to the viewers. Lord, I pray that in the name of Jesus that you touch anyone that will hear us or who have heard us and those who will connect on this program later, that, Father, the power of God will flood their hearts and their mind and they will be able to feel and to experience Experience the touch of God. We thank you, Father, because every word that is spoken here is not according to the wisdom of men, but as the Spirit helped us and enabled us uh, and given us the utterance. And so, Lord, I pray, pursue your word to the hearts of men. Pursue your word to the souls of men all over the world, whoever will come across this program. Bless them and touch them and liberate them from all the things that are holding them for them not to operate in your perfect will. I pr pray that God you may touch them, bless even the Elevate TV and also the voice, uh, the, the host, uh, Pastor Asunta, in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. Apostle David, you can pray for the territory we are in. You can pray for those that are coming forth, just as the Holy Spirit leads you also. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the move of your spirit. Mm. We thank you for the things that you are birthing across mm. this nation. This is a East African mm. gate, the mm. East of Africa, mm. which is a gate and entry into this region. And Father, you strategically placed Kenya mm. as a lighthouse of Africa, as a fathering nation, as a nation that is carrying the firepower to activate even the rest of Africa. I pray that the people that are supposed to be in this river of God and this fire of God, may they be birthed everywhere, in every denomination, in every church, in every village, in every city. And Father, we pray in this city of Nairobi, is going to continue to play her role in the name of Jesus. Mm. Pray for leaders and pastors everywhere. That God, as people come together and in unity, in prayer, concerted effort, mm. is going to spring forth a move of God and a revival that has not been seen before. Mm. And this revival will also become transformational mm. to impact society and birth and create new institutions. Father, I thank you for the new army of the Lord that is rising everywhere. I pray, let the move of God move in a special way everywhere, in every family, in every home. Lord, prepare the next generation, and we are ready. We speak it forth, we prophesy it forth in the name of Jesus. And those who have been discouraged, O oh Lord, may they arise and shine, for the light of God has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, Pastor Sunta, before we go, yes. we invite our viewers to Kasarani. Oh, absolutely. Festival of Hope. We have a great gospel tent meeting this coming week from Wednesday all the way to Sunday in Kasarani. From uh, the roundabout or Isam, we'll get to Kasarani side and you drive down, you pass through uh, beyond Kasarani Primary School, the Kasarani Mwiki Road uh, on the side of uh, uh, the Kasarani uh, National Stadium where there was a China Center on that Kasarani Mwiki Road uh, opposite Warren after Kasarani Primary School. And at the steamer stage, we have a gospel tent meeting. We are excited. The tent is already being put up right now as I talk. And we are looking forward for five days of the gospel. 
in the mornings, 10 to 12, that we are calling all pastors and leaders. We have seminars every day, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday morning, all women, all ladies in Nairobi North, you are welcome 10 in the morning to 12 30. And of course, every lunch time from Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we're going to have, or the Saturday, up to Saturday, we're going to have the lunch hour meeting there. It's going to be great. In the evening from 4 o'clock all the way to 8 o'clock, five days of a move of God. Sunday, of course, is in the afternoon from 3 o'clock. You're welcome. We have a gospel band, the MC band. You're going to enjoy the music, the preaching of the gospel. We have an evangelist, a man of God from Netherlands. Uh, this is a man, a friend of T.L. Osborne. This is Johan. I mean, John T.L. Marshberg, whose father was Johan Marshberg. He's our friend. We've worked with him for many years. He's coming with a team from Netherlands. I'll be preaching. He will be preaching. And many men of God are coming. Listen, if you are tuned in tonight, find your way into Kasarani these five days from 23rd to 27. We're looking forward. Apostle, of course, we look forward to see you there. Yeah. We are seeing yeah. God doing many things. People are going to be saved. Mm -hmm. People are going to be healed. Yes, Church yes. is going to be awakened. Amen. People are going to be revived. Amen. It's going to be a combined harvest, Amen. a kind of a conference Amen. Amen. and meeting. Festival of hope. We must bring back hope in the church and among God's people. Amen. So thank Amen. you very much. Thank you so much. Would you talk to us about your church? Just invite people to your church. All right. Yeah. We, we are at Dunholm, uh, Greenspan Mall, uh, just at the mall. That floor, there is a motion cinema. We are using the, the main screen. So you're welcome. We are Oasis of Urban and Grace. And every uh, last Saturday of the month, we do the retooling summit. Uh, this is a ministry to the body, ministry to the leaders, and the, the, especially those who are coming up. And especially the coming Sunday afternoon, we'll be having a major, major meeting in that place. God bless you so much. We are waiting for you. You're blessed. Amen. You're blessed. Amen. And Apostle David and I, we minister at Life Church. Yeah, Apostolic House, <laughs> Kenya Cinema. Yes. You're welcome for our services. Yes. Of course, Morning Glory. Every morning, oh, 6 yeah. a.m. Mm -hmm. If you are walking in the city and you come yeah. early in the CBD, mm -hmm. Morning Glory, Kenya Cinema, you're Come welcome. and meet me there. And the lunch hour <laughs> services, of course, yes. from 1 to 2 o'clock. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And Sunday morning, 9 in the morning on the 11th. Yeah. Day. Amen. Praise God. God bless you, gentlemen. It was wonderful you. having you. Thank After you. this, I'm, I will not be calling him gentleman. Mm. <laughs> but <laughs> Lily, it was wonderful, Lily. Thank, Thank you. Having you we come to dressing the mantles. When I invite you next, mm. please again come we'll and come. Uh, let's continue with this conversation. We will continue eating and eating and hitting the rock until water. Will come, come forth Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Good night. It was nice having you. Thank you for conversing with us. Thank you for being a part of this program. It means you have an interest in these things we are saying and you are a partaker of these things. We are Amen. so happy to have, had, to have had you, to have hosted you with us. We believe God is at work. He is doing something in your heart. If he does in your heart and in another person's heart and in another person's life and the fellowship keeps growing, let me tell you, sooner or later, something will break forth in a new way. Amen. Good night. We're going to meet you next Sunday, same time, and we've got a program for you next Sunday. We look forward to that. Please look forward to that. Amen. Have yourselves a wonderful night in the presence of God. Peace in your house. Peace where you live. Experience the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Good night. Amen. Bye.